Hello, hello everybody, it's Mr. Lee David Carter here and I wanted to talk about the second part of dysphoria and the coping mechanisms that are involved. Now many suffer with sleep, emotional distress, um, having to take medications in order to sleep as a coping me mechanism. Others may suffer with anxiety, they might suffer with all of it. You know, as a coping mechanism, the chef, stress of their identity, the presence of breasts or, uh, you know, to have that masculine chest, um, hormone th therapy, you know, and gender affirming, uh, right down to uh, surgery being contributed to that particular individual in order to, to get rid of the dysphoria as a coping mechanism. Um, also, you know, there's other strategies that are used like uh, medications, many may take medications as a form of coping, as a mechanism, and they'll use them, or some may even use marijuana, even, maybe. Uh, so there is an underlying problem, and it can be seen like this. Uh, there's additional problems, you know, transgender health, uh, the advice I would say, and from suggest by many and I've experienced it myself is obesity uh, it's not just anxiety hypertension even stroke and not just poor sleep suffering with dysphoria substance abuse many will turn to drugs or drink even as a way of escaping as a coping mechanism some there are some risk behaviors you know depression even suicidal, which I've mentioned before, as a coping mechanism, <clears throat> coping mechanism, you know, you just find you wake up one day and, and, and you, you assign this particular sense and you don't identify uh, that there's a mismatch, that you feel like the opposite sex. So these are coping mechanisms for many individuals, okay? Um, so there is medical intervention. There are specialists you can see as a coping mechanism. You go and see a therapist, they go and make an assessment. Um, and doing an evaluation, should I say, um, whether it's a beginning or during or after puberty, or you know, surgical interventions used, hormones are used, uh, where some kids, some kinds of clothing, uh, you know, rejection of toys and that, everything's used as a coping me mechanism. But you know, sometimes wearing clothes and refusing and rejecting toys, that's not enough with dysphoria. So many will go as far as taking hormones. So over the years with dysphoria, you know, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's, should I say, consistently shown to work for many. Um, other factors can include, say, um, it, can, it, can, it can be painful and even paralyzing to many. So it's important to have the support uh, system involved and in place, whether, you know, you're in the closet or you're out of the closet, basically. Um, and it's crucial, should I say, that you have at least uh, one person you can talk to, whether it be uh, long distance or a friend or a part of a support group or online. And this can be seen as helpful. And it can be lonely when you need someone to get that support, knowing that you're going through this with dysphoria, to understand what it is you're going through. Uh, many are struggling with dysphoria. So you're not alone. You, you know, you could go online and go into a chat room or uh, go locally, connect on social media, go on Facebook, find people like yourself, similar experiences, social networking, try and connect. If, you know, you can connect with anyone in the world now, you've got the internet. Um, so it's just one person even that you can talk to and help. Great, you've got support, someone like yourself or someone you can connect with. Um, so, you know, you start the hormones um, in order to, 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 to tackle as a coping mechanism with dysphoria um, and in your body it helps decrease the dysphoria depending on what kind of amount you've got how much you specifically need like testosterone but it significantly significant significantly should I say aligns um, with your brain chemistry and who you are starting that starting that hormone process which I went for a decade ago and it helps to decrease the anxiety the depression um, you know, to decrease dysphoria, when we're talking about um, F FTM. Um, and it's the same with estrogen, like M MTF, uh, where they'll take that, but obviously the changes are not so drastically fast physically as they are for FTM. 
I mean, I know within one month, my voice changed and I stopped my periods. But for the estrogen, the MTF, MTF their changes are not as fast as FTM. So these are other methods that are used to, to cope as a coping mechanism, like starting the hormones. Um, and then of course there are, you know, if you can go further than that for many, uh, whereby you know you'll seek advice and go as far as going for surgery, um, which is something you need to consider. You know, if if if, you, if the transition doesn't feel right, don't feel comfortable with the dysphoria, then you'll medically get the advice that you need and uh, and move on to that process in order to go through the changes and decrease, should I say, the dysphoria that you're feeling within yourself. So. It is a long process in order to decrease dysphoria and, and everybody's different and everybody goes through a different process depending on how they feel and what it is that aligns with them. Um, from my experience, you know, I went through the, the whole process. I started the hormones and then I had five gender re re reassignment surgeries. I went through the whole process um, and I'm fully complete. But that's what aligns with me. Everybody out there is different. It's whatever aligns with you. So that was my transition. Some may not have the surgery. Some may just have the hormones, or they may even have just half of the surgery. If it's FTM, they may not go the whole way. So everybody's different. Um, but, you know, um, so there are steps that need to be taken to go through the transition, should I say, whether, whether it be medical surgery or hormone as a process to decrease the dysphoria, it's important that you engage in any kind of behaviour to express who you are and be true to yourself, which is what I say to people, to help you feel more empowered about your future and also um, and, and in control of your life and more in control of who you are and, you know, and just, you know, for example, even if you have to wear an item or two of clothing, just to express who you are, for example, or one of the most, you know, dysphoric areas is for trans guys is, is the chest area, binding the breasts. Um, but that can lead to medical issues as well, which I spoke about in other blogs. Even wearing binders can cause skin problems and that, so you have to be careful. But surgery can be seen as an option when looking at FTM, to have, you know, to have a mastectomy and, you know, and have that masculine chest, which I spoke about on this morning show when we went on there back in a decade ago. So yeah. So all of that, and there's even apps for voice even, and therapy and also, when you, have, you go through the change in your voice, those that are struggling with dysphoria. So these are all coping mechanisms, and yet there's so many others. So those with gender dysphoria, who you are inside and, and what you like, you know, you know, on the outside, you know, and how you see yourself, it's not, it's not, it's not the rest, it's not uh, what the rest of the world sees that causes the distress is what's inside of you see if, even though people can't understand it so these are all coping mechanisms that you can use to to decrease the dysphoria I talk mainly about FTMs we spoke a little bit about MTF but you know obviously their changes are not so drastically fast as I've said but with regards to FTM mainly so the, these are the things that you can do even, even as far as your voice looking at apps and everything so I'm going to sign off for now. Thank you for joining me and watching this video. I'm going to say, um, please press the subscribe button and yeah, and um, and you can any questions you want to ask, you can reach me on info at leedavidcarter.com or team at leedavidcarter.com, and I'm on www.leedavidcarter.com. So I'm going to sign off for now. Say love and light, love and stay, and it's great speaking to you all. And yeah, stay positive and keep going and just be who you are and. Just follow your heart, okay? Speak to you soon. Bye for now.